Okay, so continuing our tour of the phylogeny, now we'll be looking within the amniotes at reptiles and birds. So we looked at amphibians and amniotes. Within amniotes, there's two major groups. There's the anapsids and diapsids, which are going to be reptiles and birds. And then the synapsids, which are where mammals come from. So let's look for now at this group of reptiles and birds here. And first, turtles. It's unclear from the fossil record whether turtles are actually anapsids or diapsids. It's clear that reptiles are actually diapsids. So here's what turtles look like. There are two major groups of turtles. There's cryptodira. So cryptodira, they pull their necks straight back. And that's probably the ones you're more familiar with. And then there's pleurodira. They're called side neck turtles. They don't pull their necks back. They actually kind of flop them along the side of their body, kind of tuck them up underneath the edge of the shell here. So here's a Galapagos tortoise, one of the largest reptiles. You can see how big they are in comparison to birds. This is leatherback sea turtle, alligator snapping turtle, and then a side-necked turtle here. So they all have this shell, although in these guys the shell has been mostly reduced in terms of the rigidity of it. And it's actually quite interesting, the shell is evolved from the, the ribs, and so in fact the scapula and the shoulders here are essentially inside of the ribs, which is a really interesting evolutionary adaptation and remarkable change in the body plan of these organisms. So that's turtles. Now let's move on to the modern diapsids. So within diapsids, we have two major groups. We have archosauria and we have lepidosauria. Those are the two major groups of diapsids. And within archosauria, we have crocodiles and alligators and then dinosaurs and then birds. So let's look within archosauria. So crocodiles and alligators, they're predators, right? So you can see this eating a capybara. This is an alligator, has the wide mouth. This is a gharial, which you may not have heard of. They have very, very long, thin mouths, and they basically kind of use these as nets. They hold them open, they swing them back and forth through the water to snag fish. If you ever have to fight one of these guys, the key thing is their muscles are really great at closing, so they can crunch through bone like this. They have almost no musculature to open back up again. So if you can avoid that first bite, you can basically hold their mouths shut just with one hand. Here just pinching something. That's the secret trick of alligator wrestlers they don't tell you about but makes their job relatively safe. Uh, when I used to live in Florida, uh, there are all sorts of roadside alligator wrestling farms. Um, so alligators and crocodiles, there's a variety of different sort of hunting techniques, right? Hunting mammals or hunting fish. And this is the outgroup of the rest of the archosauria, which is going to be dinosaurs. So there's three major groups of dinosaurs we'll look at. The ornithischian dinosaurs, which are referred to as bird-hipped herbivores. So these guys are all herbivores. Unfortunately, although they're called bird-hipped herbivores, this group of dinosaurs is not the group of dinosaurs that birds evolved from. You can see they have kind of these, these high hips. And this is where most of your non-apatosaurus-looking herbivores are going to be, right? So Stegosaurus and the best dinosaur, which is Ankylosaurus. Sauropodomorpha, so long-necked herbivores, Apatosaurus and Diplodocus and that sort of thing, the, the big nice guys from Jurassic Park. And then Theropoda, so theropod dinosaurs are bipedal carnivores, so Tyrannosaurus and Dionychus, Allosaurus, and in fact Archaeopteryx. So when you look at Archaeopteryx without feathers, it basically looks exactly like one of these guys and birds evolved from within theropod dinosaurs. So birds are essentially the modern remnants of what used to be bipedal carnivorous dinosaurs. So what do birds look like? So this is a class. There's two major groups of birds. There's paleonathy and neonathy. This is a, this video of a bird actually killing itself goat here. Right? So you can actually drop it off the cliff and then it can go eat it later. Birds range in sizes from hummingbirds, which are very small, to ostriches, which are gigantic. Paleonathy is these ostrichy type things we'll look at in a second. And then some of the most famous from an evolutionary point of view for birds, this is um, Darwin's finches, where you have a variety of different beak shapes within this group of closely related birds. So paleonathy are sometimes considered to be the basal group of birds. So this includes ostriches, emus, cassowaries, kiwis, and the tinamou. These guys are flightless, 
and often larger than a lot of the other birds that you'll think about. Neonathy is basically all the other birds. So when you're not thinking about an ostrich or a kiwi, you're almost definitely thinking about a neonathy, right? frigate birds with their big sacs that they inflate, ospreys, penguins, all those sorts of things. So this group here is quite specious. Right? There's lots of different species of neonathy, many more species than there are of paleonathy. And again, this group here evolved from the theropod dinosaurs. The theropod dinosaurs have all gone extinct. The birds remain, and depending on how you like to classify things, you can, in fact, correctly consider birds to be dinosaurs. That's this archosaurian group up here. So now let's move down to Lepidosaur, which are the rest of the reptiles. Sphenodon or Tuatara, iguanas, snakes, amphisbenians, and lizards. So the Tuatara, uh, the national animal of New Zealand, also called a Sphenodon, it looks not that different from a lot of other reptiles or lizards, but there are a number of features in its anatomy that are highly unusual and very different from everything else. They have a little light-sensing organ in their head, a pineal eye. When you look at their neck vertebrae, they're very different. They live their lives in slow motion. They are very, very different in many ways from the other lepidosaurs. These are iguanas. So this is an iguana on top of a telephone pole. So sometimes they do get adventurous. This is basal to the rest of the lepidosaurs, the other sorts of reptiles and lizards we're familiar with. So snakes, amphisbenians, and other lizards. So here's a snake in a tree. Chameleons are these really interesting lizards that have evolved interesting color patterns and zygodactylous feet, where their um, feet basically allow them to clamp onto branches. Frill neck lizard to make itself look fierce. And then amphisbenians are limbless or mostly limbless lizards, so they're not snakes. Snakes are limbless lizards in their own monophyletic group. Amphisbenians are a separate group of lizards. This is bipes, so it has tiny, tiny little front limbs and no hind limbs. It lives a lifestyle very much like the Sicilians that we saw earlier going through the ground underground, as opposed to snakes, which live above ground and some live in the water. So a lot of the diversity of reptiles that we see are in Lepidosauria, where you have your wide range of snakes and lizards. 